Hello friends, welcome back. I hope you are all doing well. Today I have a really fun project for you and we're gonna be working on some back to basic style folios. This is an envelope folio and I'm going to do the tutorial on the basic one first. And then when we get done with that, I'll show you the leveled up version where we add all the fun finishing details. So you can really customize this folio and make it your own depending on how little or how much extra finishing details you want to add. Before we get started with that tutorial, I want to give a quick thank you to the Tech Hubby for once again helping me with my videos. Now he did provide me with a new phone that has a much better camera than my old DSLR. And so I'm hoping that you will notice from here going forward that there's an improvement in the quality of the video. And I know that you will notice an improvement in the audio as well because my old microphone was getting very crackly and it was very frustrating to edit and keep that crackling noise to a minimum. So before we go any further, make sure to hop down in the comments and give me a hashtag Team Tech Hubby for all the support that he gives the channel. And now let's get on to the tutorial. Okay, so for my beginner basic album, we're going to be using this Mother Goose collection from Graphic 45. Now, I have the original version, but I did check on their website and is available as a deluxe collector edition. So if this inspires you to create with this collection, you will be able to find it there. And then for our leveled up project, I'm going to use the Graphic 45 uh, by the C collection. This is just one that I've had in my stash and I wanted to use it up. So this is actually a really good uh, collection, I think, to use for those summer holidays. It has that beautiful sort of red, white, and blue vibe to it. So this is going to be for the finished project. And I'm also going to use these envelopes. This is a basic size A2 card envelope, and I picked this up from Amazon. So it is important to mention that the envelope size is what we're going with, not the card size. So this particular set is four and three eighths of an inch high by five and three quarters of an inch wide. And so we're going to use that in a portrait rather than a landscape orientation, but the measurements will be for the envelope size and not the card size. So here are the envelopes that came in that box and I am just going to line that up here along the edge on my scoreboard and find where the crease is for the envelope before we start altering it and then I'm going to add a quarter of an inch to that and just run that all the way down with my score tool on that groove in the board. I have a second one and we'll do the same for that. That is going to mean that we have a spine of half an inch. So that's a pretty generous size for a basic style folio. I also have a piece of 65 pound weight cardstock. This is going to be for the center section where I join those envelopes together. And I decided to have a narrower page there and I'll show you that in just a bit but we're going to have a cardstock size of five and three quarter by seven inches wide and then I'll go ahead and score that at three and a half so that way we can fold that in half and that will be our center page. I have two additional pieces of 65 pound weight cardstock and this time the measurement is five and three quarter by eight and three quarters. And I'm going to come in and score that at four and three eighths so that when we fold it, we're going to get the same dimension as our envelope size. So this is going to be flip pages and I have two of those. So the first step that we need to take is to join these envelopes together. And I have already run a line of my double-sided adhesive tape along one of those flaps. And then I'll just bring those together. And I'll just go ahead and find that edge and press them into place. And then 
because this set of envelopes already had a portion where adhesive was added, I'll just go ahead and take that off. And then I'll bring in this smaller center page. So you'll notice that I did add a line of my double-sided adhesive on that. This is a good place to start with the two glue combo because I really do want this to be well secured. And so I'll just go ahead and add that now. It is a good idea to crease on those score lines so you can get it flat right on that table. And then I'll bring these pieces together right into the corner by lining up the edge. And I'll press that flap right into it. And so this is going to go right into our glue there. And I'll go ahead and add just a little bit more here. I'm being careful to stay away from the edge so that it doesn't splooge out and make a big mess. So here is our center page. And like I mentioned previously, it is cut shorter for a reason. And you'll see that when we get to the more finished folio. So now we have these pages joined and I want to add those full size flip pages. So once again, I have my adhesive already adhered and then I'll just go in with more of that Tombow. So I'm just going to go ahead and flip that over here and bring my corners together and then the top and bottom as well and press that into place. For my book, I want my pages to fold outward and so I will repeat that same process for this side as well but I'll just keep that folded edge along the outside. It's nice to have that folded edge a more finished look on the portions where you will notice it more so that will be an additional added benefit to having these fold out and so this is really just going to be the basic base design for this and you can and you can get right to adding your collection paper now if you want to so even though this is a pretty basic base I do want to go ahead and finish that spine so that it will have a nicer look on the edge and so what I have is an additional piece of that 65 pound weight cardstock and it is cut to be five and three quarter high and three inches wide. Now it doesn't really matter exactly where all that falls because it's going to be captured underneath of the pattern paper layers, but I did go ahead and put in a one inch score line just so that I could line it up nicely. I do want to have a crease on the edge so that it has a nice finished look. And I did add a little bit of my double-sided tape again and I'll put just a bit more of my Tombow and I'll bring the corner together here probably will be easier to set it down on the surface and then bring those score lines together so I know that they will match up perfectly along there and I'll just go ahead and press that into place. Now you can see we have one score line, but we need another for this side. So before I pull the tape from the spine, I'll just go ahead and line this up along one of the grooves on my scoreboard, right where that outside edge is, and give it an additional score there with the score tool. And before I pull any more adhesive backing off. I do want to just go ahead and pre-crease that so I get a nice clean edge. So I have already added my double-sided adhesive tape here and I will add just a little bit more of my Tombow. It's definitely a good idea to do this now before you begin to finish the inside of this folio because you can really go ahead and get that creased very flat and put some pressure on that while that glue sets up. So now I'll just bring in that double-sided tape and add that to the back side. One more row of our glue and then press that over 
into place. I'm just going to set it flat on the surface and then press it very well so that I know I have a good contact. So here is the basic base and I'm going to finish that with my collection papers and I'm also going to include a layer of the colorful cardstock. Not only is that a nice added extra detail, but it really does help to bulk up the thickness of these pages and make them much more sturdy. So let's add that now. We have the same page size for all of the full size pages as well as the back and front cover. So that will make it much easier to cut all of these papers as you're working along. And so the cardstock for the full size pages is is five and five eighths of an inch high by four and a quarter inches wide. And the pattern paper is five and a half by four and one eighth. So I'm just going to center that and that will be ready to add to our book. So here is that base. Once again, we'll open it up and I have the patterns matching for the pages that show together. I do find it a little bit easier to bring the widest portion to face me so that I can get it centered more easily. And as I mentioned, they're going to match. So I've got my second one cut and ready to add here. These are great for the larger pictures that you don't want to crop. And so that will give you a lot of extra room for your pictures and your journaling. I also have the same pattern chosen for these two pages that are the outside of the full size flips. And I just went with this sweet all over floral. It has a different scale and color palette. So I think this will be a nice definite layering pattern when it's all closed up. And so let's just go ahead and add that as well. And that will be the outside of the flips. And then for this side, I picked a very sweet, low contrasting star pattern. I think this folio base is perfect for any kind of collection or theme or holiday. Just swap out those pattern papers and match the cardstock to it. Okay, so now we're at the portion that is the smaller inside page. And these have a measurement of cardstock to be five and five eighths inch high by two and seven eighths inch wide. And the pattern paper is five and a half by two and three quarters. I swapped out the floral for a geometric for this so that it doesn't look too busy. And I'll just go ahead and finish both sides with that. Now remember our front and back cover is going to have the same measurements as those inside pages. And I decided to match this beautiful plaid. Of course, plaid is my favorite. I also wanted to include one section where I could have a layering of patterns in. So I thought this one would be perfect in the background. So when part of it is covered, you'll still be able to appreciate what the overall pattern is in. So I just took some of the off cuts for that. This is an optional layering um, element and you do not have to add that. But because I already had these cut, I figured I would just go ahead and add them. And so here is one layer and then the focal image is that sweet little stamp. That is my favorite one from the cut apart sheet. And I just want to add that right to the center. So here is that basic base. It has full size flip pages and then a fun detail with the shorter inside page. There is plenty of room for your pictures and journaling. And just as it is, this is really sweet and perfect, especially for a beginner project. It's very easy to cut all these pieces and it isn't terribly complicated to assemble. I thought it would also be fun to share 
a version where we do level it up and add more of those finishing details. So as I mentioned, I'm going to work with that other Graphic 45 uh, collection and I did decide to add some beautiful uh, flowers here that coordinate with the collection. I put my image on a spacer and I made it a little bit off center so that I would have room for the image to show as well as those flowers. I put some sequins here, a charm and a button, and then to the center I have some additional layering bits and I think this just makes it a little bit more personal and you can decide if you make this folio how little or how much you want to include. And so I thought it would be fun to add a photo mat somewhere for a special picture to land just on the outside. You're still going to have all those pages inside where you have plenty of room for your bigger pictures. And so I'm going to include an additional layer. And this again is just off cuts from while I was cutting those inside pages. And then I also have some of the images from that cut apart sheet. So if you have a collection with cut aparts, this is a great way to utilize them without making tip-ins or like difficult pockets. So this is just another way to get use from those fun images. Also, this particular one has lines on it. So I thought that would be ideal for adding the journaling in. So I'm going to offset this and I decided to make this a tuck spot. So things could be tucked in behind if you have a picture with writing on the back or a bit of flat memento or keepsake. You don't have to attach it to the book to have it included. So that means I want to put a bit of glue only on the outside and the bottom. And so I'm going to go ahead and just jump right to this Tombow. Remember to keep it in from the edge. You definitely don't want anything sticky coming out and attaching your pages where you don't want them to. So I'll just go ahead and offset this closer to the bottom. I have a little bit of a geometric pattern there so that will help me get it lined up evenly. And because I don't have any uh, double-sided adhesive tape, I will have to hold this in place for a bit to make sure that that glue will be set up well. So I'll just go ahead and skip to when that portion is finished. I have the same thing for this page as well. And I just want to see if I can get it pretty closely matching the other side. And then I'll do the same for this tag and the glue will be on the opposite side so that I can use it as a tuck spot as well as a place to include that journaling. And once again, I'm just going to hold this in place for a bit while I wait for that glue to set up. This collection has the cut apart sheet and so I decided to utilize those again. I don't want to make a tip in for this book, but I thought it would be a nice idea to have a place to include some tags. On the back of the images here, there is lines for including journaling, so I thought that would be a great idea. I want to include the two pictures that I like from this collection. I used my favorite one, obviously, on the cover, and so these are the remaining two that I really like. I want to use this as a pocket, and so I'm going to tip that over and add my adhesive to the top and bottom and one side only. And I'm going pretty low here. You'll see why in just a minute, but if I go to the corner, it will help me to get it lined up well. And so I'll just press that in for a bit until that glue sets up. And then also I have one for the other side and I need my image to be higher this time. So 
I'm going for that same process of adding my glue only to the top, bottom, and the side. And then now I'm going to adhere it so that it is closer to the top. This is going to be a great place to tuck in some of the additional images. And so I decided that would be why my page would be shorter so that they could hang out of that pocket and be a fun, interesting detail. So here are two. I think you could also have a picture on the back. There is a natural frame to that image, so I would cut it down and add it to the center, but you don't have to, but there is a nice amount of space to add journaling. That way you can keep the memories that go with the pictures all together. And so I'm just going to tuck that into there and you see how that hangs off. That's kind of a fun detail, I think. Let's go ahead and do the same for this side as well. I've got two more of those cut apart and I'll just slide that in. So that's going to give us a nice extra detail for this edge. And because the page is shorter, they're easy to take in and out. Remember that we have those flip pages. And for this collection, I had a fewer sheets of the paper left in. So I decided to cut some strips as borders so that I could join them together and fill the amount of space that I had. Otherwise, I didn't have enough to cover each of the pages. So I just used an extra fun border detail for that to cover the amount of space. And like I mentioned, the back is covered with that paper as well. So let's go ahead and tie this up. So here is our leveled up envelope folio and here is our easy for beginner envelope folio. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to let me know in the comments and leave me a big thumbs up for this tutorial. You can find links to the beautiful ribbon trim here as well as for our social media sites in the description below. If you're not already, I would love for you to subscribe and join our crafty little family. And as always, I'm wishing you a happy and productive day. And I thank you so much for watching. Bye.